Time now for another vlog. And it is September. Well, September's almost gone, which means my favorite time of the year is about to begin. October. It's my favorite month. No, I wasn't born in October. I just like October. It's uh, when the weather gets cooler where I live. Actually, the weather's already a little bit cooler. And it's also Halloween. Hooray. So there, there's reasons why I like October. But what happened in September 2020 in this vlog? We will talk about a variety of things. By the way, if you want to check out previous vlogs on my vlogs channel, I have a playlist where we've gone over each month over the past year, 2020. What a great year it's been. Yeah, real good. But I've also done previous other vlogs about a variety of uh, topics and whatnot. So if, if you're bored, if you're interested in some of my older vlogs, feel free and check them out. But let's discuss some of the things that happened in September 2020. As some of you may be wondering, GB, did you go to the beach? Well, most of you probably already know the answer to that question. Yes, I went to the beach. Especially if you happen to follow me on the Instagram, you probably saw a whole bunch of beach pics. And you probably also uh, saw some uh, videos, uh, little 30 second videos of waves crashing. I like the beach. So yeah, I did go to the beach and at the beginning of the month to spend some time with my sisters, my brother-in-laws, as well as my nephew. He's only a few months old. He's a nice little guy. Seems friendly enough. He'll probably be nothing but trouble when he gets older. Hopefully not. So overall, I had a good time at the beach with my sisters and their husbands, as well as the nephew. The nephew, I mean, he's only a baby. He's only a few months old, so he acted as you would expect from a baby. You know, there were times when he would cry, where his mom, my, my youngest sister, had trouble putting him to sleep. And there were times when he was a happy little baby. I mean, that's pretty much how they roll. But overall, I would, I would give him like, like a, maybe like an A. Okay, he's my nephew. I'll give him an A. Not an A plus, but not, not a B plus either. He's somewhere in the middle. So he did all right. He did all right for a baby. And my sister's doing a pretty good job for a mom, which is crazy because I was pretty young when she was born, but they're my kid sisters. And some of you may know my mom did pass away when I was very young, but my dad did remarry a couple of times. And from one of those marriages, I, I got two sisters out of it. So I was about five, six years old. My dad uh, remarried the second time after my mom. And they had two daughters, which are my two sisters. And well, was I was six or seven or eight, I forgot. I mean, anyways, they both were born. I was old enough to remember when they were both born and when they were both babies. And it's so weird still remembering my youngest sister when she was a baby. Now she's like taller than me. That's genetics, my dad's. Uh, but he was a little bit taller than me. But my mom was pretty short. But their mom was a little bit taller. So genetics worked in both of my sister's favor. But I still remember when she was a baby, my youngest, and now she has a baby. It's so strange. But, you know, people grow up. That's just life. You know, we're born. We grow up. And we grow old, and then we're gone. You hope there's something else on the other side. Hopefully. But overall, beach trip was good. And I don't know why, but I feel drawn to the beach whenever I go. It's like there's a siren calling me. Because the moment I, I made it through the, tr the, the drive, which is kind of a pain in the ass if I remember correctly. There's a few stops I had to make. And uh, I missed a couple of exits going down through East Texas. But when I finally saw, like, the end of the road, right, when I saw the, the Gulf of Mexico right before me, oh, it, it felt so good. I was like, oh, there's, there it is. There it is. I finally made it. And I swear, there was just part of me that the moment I saw it, I didn't want to leave. I was just at that point where I was just ready just not to come back. I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll just stay here. I'll, I'll tell my friend who's been crashing my guest room while he's looking for work. To just, uh, yeah, sell all my stuff. Sell all my stuff. Uh, ship me my uh, computers and anything else. Maybe maybe my pets. <laughs> okay, I'd probably come back for my pets. 
maybe. But, you know, just, you know, split the everything else, you know, that he sells 50-50. And I'll, I'll just live on the beach and he can go to Panama or wherever he wants to go. Hopefully he'll find a new job soon enough, hopefully. But, yeah, it's just, I go back and forth about whether or not I want to live on a beach or do I want to live near the mountains, like up in uh, Montana, for example. The struggle is real. Until I decide where I actually want to go, I'll just stay where I am. Right now, it's actually not bad. I mean, we haven't had any uh, major peaceful protests here where I live, surprisingly. And because it's the fall, the South is actually quite nice in the fall. During the uh, summer, it can get hot and humid and extremely miserable. But in the fall, the winter, it's, it's manageable. Sometimes we have really cold winters. Nothing like up in, for example, Montana where there's snow. But, I mean, we get excited when we get, like, a little bit of snow and everything closes, like bridge closes, school closes, businesses close over snow down here. In the south, we just don't know how to how to handle ourselves when we just get, like, a foot of snow at the most. I don't even know if we get even a foot of snow. But maybe we'll get some snow this winter. That would be nice. Oh, by the way, in case you're wondering, we are, in fact, uh, in the B-roll, in the background, as I drive and vlog at the same time. This is Mafia Defensive Edition, a free ride, which I just uh, finished on Medium what uh, a few days ago. I'm now going through it on Classic on Mondays over on the gaming channel. And also posted a uh, review of Mafia Defensive Edition. As some of you know, I was pretty excited about this game coming out. And years prior, I dreamed of the idea of a remake to Mafia City Lost Heaven. And, well, sometimes dreams do come true. So I've been really enjoying my time back in Lost Heaven. And going forward, this might be what you see in future vlogs. Just me driving around in free ride in Mafia Defense Edition in these sweet 1930s cars. I think this one is possibly my favorite. This car has really grown on me, this cute little coupe. I love it. It's a nice little car. It's fast. It's sporty. It can get around the place. So I like this car. But I'll every month I'll try to drive a different vehicle. I'm going to try and keep it in the vlogs like time period appropriate because there are a couple of vehicles. Like there's one vehicle from the 1950s from Mafia 2. And then there's a 1960s muscle car from Mafia 3 that you can also drive around in Mafia Defense Edition. But I'll just keep it to 1930s automobiles. I think that would obviously uh, make sense. Maybe eventually I'll go back to doing uh, vlogs over in GTA Online. But most of them have been GTA Online. Except for one. I think one I did... What, uh, Red Dead Online? I don't know why, but Red Dead Online vlogging didn't really work out. I just didn't, I didn't like it as much. As much as I love, you know, galloping around in Red Dead Online, I just feel more comfortable vlogging in a car. So I think that will just stick with Mafia Defense Edition for a while. Last month, I believe it was, what, Mafia City of Lost Heaven, and see, promises kept. I told y'all a month ago that I was going to be vlogging over here in Mafia Defense Edition. Overall, I enjoyed Mafia Defense Edition, and like I said, I did do a review, and every Monday we are going to be playing through Mafia Defense Edition on the gaming channel. Mafia Monday, as we call it, uh, playing the classic difficulty setting, whereas my first playthrough was on medium, and now we're moving on to classic. But anyways, what else is happening? Oh yeah, speaking of the gaming channel, we have reached 12,500 subscribers, very awesome, and... I am just grateful to have anybody watching my content, my streams, my videos, my vlogs. Each and every one of you mean a great deal to me. You take time out of your lives to watch my stuff. I don't know why you do. Hopefully it at the very least uh, entertains you, maybe educates you. I don't know what it does for you. Maybe it gives you some feels. But I do appreciate each and every one of you that take the time to watch my live streams on the gaming channel, the content I make on the gaming channel, and uh, the vlogs over here on the vlog channel. For those of you that have subscribed to the vlog channel, I appreciate you all as well. So, a milestone reached 12,500 subscribers on the gaming channel. That is good news. That is awesome. I think we'll stay in the city because I feel like there's like a frame issue that happens when I go outside the city. I don't know why, but we'll just keep it in lost heaven. So, uh, what else has happened? Oh yeah, uh, entertainment wise, uh, I've been watching some shows. I finally got around to binging Cobra Kai. Uh, we did, uh, what, seasons one and two. They were all right. I feel like some of the conflicts that they, they bring up in Cobra Kai are forced. And uh, 
did I talk about Cobra Kai last month? I don't remember. Maybe I did, or maybe it was during a live stream. But overall, I thought Cobra Kai was okay. I, it could be better. It could be worse. I'll definitely watch season three whenever it comes out in 2021, if we're still around in 2021. Hey, the year's far from over, and we still have an election in my country to look forward to. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, but the uh, other show I've been watching is uh, season two of The Boys. Oh, goody. The cops are after me. I don't know where they can't catch me. I wish they would just go get some donuts and leave me alone. But anyways, uh, The Boys Season 2 has been okay so far. I know a lot of people have had a problem with The Boys because, like, in the first season on Amazon, uh, they, like, put them all out at the same time so you could binge them, similar to the uh, Netflix shows. But at the same time, they decided to do something a little different with The Boys Season 2. They put out, like, three episodes and then they uh, changed their mind and said, okay, well, after three episodes, then we're going to make it weekly. So the reason why the cops are chasing me is because, unlike GT Online, where you can go as fast as you want, depending on the difficulty setting in uh, Mafia Defense Edition, I happen to have it on hard. I don't have it on classic. I need to put it back on classic before Monday stream or after I'm done with that dreaded race. There's a race in here that most Mafia fans don't exactly enjoy. So while I'm trying to do the vlog, the cops are after me for reasons. So I, if I would have put this difficulty setting down to like medium, this would not be a problem. So I do apologize. Enjoy the, the, the chase while I try to talk. But yeah, one of the more realistic aspects of uh, the Mafia universe as opposed to uh, GT Online where you can be driving as fast as you want and the cops won't bother you. But the cops do still come after you in GT Online for other reasons besides speeding are breaking uh, traffic laws, for example. So where were we? Oh, yeah, The Boys Season 2. I've enjoyed it so far. I mean, there's, uh, what, uh, two episodes left. We got uh, what fr this Friday, next Friday, so that's about to wrap up. Hopefully it'll be on par with Season 1. I, I thought it's been okay, for the most part. But let's see, what else has been happening entertainment-wise? Oh, sports. Yay, the uh, NFL's back. American football. I just haven't really been enjoying it too much. I mean, I'm not really as hardcore about American football as I once was anyways, but I've been trying to watch it, and uh, it's just, it's not really what it used to be for me. I'm, I'm just not as passionate about it. Our uh, American college football, which is also back. So, yeah, it's just, I don't know, I just don't care. So I'm just kind of over it. I'm kind of over both college football and American professional football, the NFL. It's just something, I guess you could say, I watch out of boredom. There's nothing else on. And I'm curious to see how good or bad the New Orleans Saints are doing because I used to be a big-time New Orleans Saints fan, obviously because I live in Louisiana. But these days, I, I really could care less. So if I don't watch any more New Orleans Saints or LSU football this year, it's not the end of the world for me. And it's especially weird whenever there's like hardly anybody in the uh, stands, hardly any fans. That's even weirder because you're used to seeing people in the stands. And in all the NFL games, there have been hardly anybody. Like maybe a few hundred people, like VIP tickets. I guess they're like family members of the players. But at the same time, it just doesn't feel the same without the fans. So, and there's other reasons why I'm kind of tired of the NFL as well and most of sports in general. It's just bread and circus. I find more entertainment out of watching these shows like Cobra Kai or uh, The Boys or like playing a video game. I'd rather just play a video game or watch somebody live stream a video game, whether it's Mafia Defense Edition or something else entirely like Red Dead Online, etc. So anyways, that's enough uh, sports entertainment. Well, I, I guess we'll have some more entertainment coming up in just a moment. The uh, rioting and the uh, looting have uh, continued across my country. I mean, sorry. Peaceful protesting. Yes, peaceful protesting. I am so sick and tired of the peaceful protesting. Obviously, I'm, I'm saying that in quotes. Real peaceful protesting I'm perfectly fine with. Even if your opinion is different than my opinion and you're protesting something I disagree with, then that's cool. As long as you're civil about it, as long as you're peaceful about it, as long as you're not harassing and intimidating and threatening other people, then I'm cool. No problem for me, but you, you go to businesses, you start firebombing them, you start looting them, 
You start uh, threatening patrons and say at a restaurant who are just trying to have dinner or lunch, mind their own business. You have no idea if any of those people that are eating are supporters of your cause. They might be. And maybe most people actually are supportive. But not when you're harassing people, not when you're intimidating them, not when you're threatening them. That is not something you do in a, in a democracy. That's not something you do whenever you're supposed to be living in a free country. And you claim that everyone else is the fascist when you're the ones acting like fascists. And once again, I'm all about equality. I'm all about people treating each other like human beings and individuals. But I, I don't like it when people start treating people that way. And it's just, it's getting out of control. I'm not going to mention the various groups. Some of you probably know what I'm talking about. But it, it's sad because you have an organization who has come up with a name that most people would not disagree with. But those behind the organization have, dare I say, Marxist communist leanings. That I have a serious problem with. That's where I take issue. Along with the harassing and the intimidation and, and all that other crap. That's not peaceful protesting, rioting, burning buildings to the ground. No, that's, that's not peaceful at all. So, uh, speaking of entertainment, back we go. Uh, last night was the first debate between Trump and Biden. And I've debated myself, get it, debate, uh, making a uh, debate review video over on uh, the political channel, which I've once again uh, put on hiatus. I've sent it off to slumber, to hibernation. Eventually I bring it back and then I get tired of it again. It's a never-ending cycle for me. It's like politics is a drug to me, a vice. And even though I've been burnt out of politics for a very long time, there's just something about it that brings me back in. And uh, I'll, I'll say something. Uh, it was entertaining last night between, between Trump and Biden. Yeah, it was pretty entertaining. Now, I come from an old school mindset of debate because I, I grew up in debate class. And like I mentioned, I, I was kind of into uh, politics for the longest time. From like being a Republican, yes, once upon a time I was Republican, uh, to being a Libertarian. In fact, I was uh, the uh, chair of the local Libertarian Party for a couple years until I started feeling like I was more of a, a moderate than a Libertarian. And then I, I resigned because I no longer felt like I was a true Libertarian. I just felt like it was a disservice for me to remain as a Libertarian when I no longer felt like I was 100% Libertarian. But at the end of the day... I am still, um, I guess you could say, an old school type debate person. I, I like the civility of debates where you can go up against an opponent and you can debate a topic and not make it personal. Simply you know, go on the issues, the track record of your opponent, especially if they're the incumbent and you're the underdog. Without making it personal, without it getting ugly. But unfortunately, that has changed. The times have changed when it comes to uh, debates. Gone are the days of civility, and now we have... Uh, well, I mean, the truth is, we had mudslinging before Trump came along, and we'll have mudslinging after he's gone. But to watch last night's debate between Trump and Biden, it was, like I said, it, I was expecting it to be entertaining, and it did not dis disappoint in that regard. Once again, as I've mentioned a few times, I don't support Biden. I have no faith in him. I think he's a terrible choice. I think the truth is he has something going on there. And I think he requires some sort of medical care not to be propped up and having them look the other way, pretending that there's nothing wrong with Biden. There's clearly issues. I mean, he did a little bit better last night than I thought he was going to do. But there's also some people that have put out some interesting uh, images. You know, one with a wire uh, coming out behind his jacket. And then there's another like weird thing on one of his, like his left wrist. And so it's led to a lot of speculation, perhaps even conspiracy theories about what was going on there. Like the wire, like, is it, 
Like he had like a wire set up on him with like some wireless uh, hearing aids, like ear pods, where like somebody was like telling him what to say. And what was with that other thing? I know some of you probably don't know what I'm talking about, but there was some images that came out. But he, I mean, overall, you could just say he did better than I thought. But he still didn't do good enough to win over anybody. I don't really think it was a win for either candidate. They both slugged it out. It got really muddy. And there, there was a lot of zingers being thrown back and forth. I feel like Trump got more zingers out than, than Biden did. So I do feel like that maybe somebody out there could make the argument that Trump did a better job at the debate than Biden because Trump has his strategy. That's how he rolls. You know, a lot of us know that from the Republican primaries back in 2016 to when he debated Hillary uh, four years ago. So we knew what we were expecting out of Trump when it came to debating. And Biden just, he did not do the job. He didn't seal the deal, in my opinion. And the thing about debating is unlike sports, like we were talking about a moment ago, uh, sports, you have a score at the end, right? You have a score where, you know, this team clearly won, this clear this team clearly lost. But when it comes to debates, it's up to your opinion. You are basing who won on your opinion. Did you think Biden did a better job than, in your opinion, Biden won? However, if you thought Trump did a better job, then in your opinion, Trump won. And that's the same thing for all the talking heads. And their opinions don't matter any more than your opinion. So the truth is, the debate comes down to simply trying to win over new people. Most of the viewers probably already decided who they're going to vote for. The Biden supporters were not swayed to vote for Trump. And the Trump supporters were not swayed to vote for Biden. There may have been a few undecideds watching that genuinely wanted to look at these two candidates head to head and decide for themselves which one was the better choice. At the end of the day, that's up to the individual to decide on their own views, their own opinions, and what they liked from the candidates, what they didn't like. So that, that comes down to their point of view. And I respect that. But for the most part, it was just a shit show. <laughs> it was just entertainment, in my opinion. And Mark Hamill posted something about, uh, what did he say? That he had, uh, this is the worst thing he ever saw, and he was in the Star Wars Holiday Special. Uh, Mark, love you. You know, you're great. You know, the, the, the Jedi Master himself, Luke Skywalker, and Joker from Batman the Animated Series and uh, the Arkham Games. Love you as Joker, love you as Luke Skywalker, but you were also in, uh, you know, <laughs> Last Jedi and uh, Rise of Skywalker, which I think are worse than uh, the Star Wars Holiday Special. And then you had one of the writers for Fantastic Four basically say the same thing. Once again, I still believe that the Fantastic Four is worse. Okay, Fantastic Four fans, you can put down the tomatoes, right? I'm just not a Fantastic Four fan, okay? I'm not really a Biden fan. I'm not really a, a Trump fan. But I just don't know. I, at this point, I cannot bring myself to vote for Biden. Maybe on election day, I just stay home. I, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. And at, at the end of the day, it's everybody. They have their right to vote for the candidate they, they want to vote for. So that's really what it comes down to. And one of the first things they talked about during the debate last night was the passing of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. You know, she was one of our Supreme Court justices. And uh, the Democrats are not happy that the Republicans want to replace her. And the reality is the Senate is in control of the Republicans, you know, from 2016, the previous midterm election. And the current president is Trump, a Republican. So by law, by the Constitution, the Republicans have a right to replace Ruth Bader Ginsburg with uh, a candidate of their choice because they're both still serving out their terms. You know, Trump, like he mentioned, you know, I was elected to serve four terms, not three, ter three years. I meant four years, not three years. You know what I meant. I screw up all the time. But legally, Trump's right. And uh, the Senate, under the Republicans, they, they won in 2016. They held control of the Senate. And they have a right to put the person in the Supreme Court justice position that they so desire, for better or worse. Now, if you had a Democrat president and a Democrat-controlled Senate, it would be the same situation, the same thing. 
But that's the way politics are. They always criticize the other guy, the other girl for doing something, but when they do it, oh, they look the other way. Doesn't matter which side. It's usually one and the same. Sadly, two sides of the same coin. I just would like to see Supreme Court justices that weren't liberal or conservative, that just simply followed the rule of law. They were straight down the middle. That's what I want. That they're they're not basing their decisions on their on their conservative views or their liberal views. I know I'm asking for too much here. And me being a moderate, of course, I want somebody more in the middle. That just makes sense. If I was president, hypothetically, <laughs> that's never going to happen. Of course, I would, if I had the opportunity to put a uh, justice on the Supreme Court, I would want somebody like that. Somebody who follows the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the amendments, and somebody who will, who will call it down the middle. Who believes in individual rights, property rights, gun rights, but at the same time, marriage equality, gay rights, trans rights. You know, somebody in the middle, like, like I think most people are. At least I'd, I'd like to believe that. Of course, I could be wrong because of how divided the country is. And every year, every election cycle, over the past decade, I have noticed that it gets more and more divided. And eventually, it's possibly going to lead in the very near future to it snapping. And there's talk of more civil unrest happening in my country. And depending on how the election goes, and that was another thing they, they brought up last night, was the whole debate about mail-in ballots. And they brought up a lot of issues, and they just had a nice big back and forth between Biden and Trump. But the mail-in ballots I do find concerning. I mean, absentee ballots are different than mail-in ballots. There's a lot more steps taken when it comes to uh, absentee ballots than mail-in. I feel like there's not as many like safeguards put in place, and there has been... Uh, Proven stories that have come out, incidences across the country from New York, New Jersey, and elsewhere, where there has been some shenanigans happening with mail-in ballots. So mail-in ballots do concern me. And because several medical experts have said that despite the fact we're under the bug right now, we're still having to put up with the bug, yeah, it's still around, that according to like Dr. Fauci and a few others, it's still perfectly fine for people to take the proper precautions, social distance, wash your hands, wear your masks when you go to the voting booths on election day. So if you really want to vote for Biden or if you really want to vote for Trump, then my advice is to go to the polls. That's what I think. Unless you have some sort of disability or something that makes it extremely difficult for you to be able to go to the polls, then... I don't have a problem with somebody uh, having an absentee ballot as long as they turn it in in time. But the mail-in ballots, yeah, I'm kind of concerned about that. I, I definitely am. But anyways, uh, speaking of the bug, that's still happening, and there's still debate about what to do. And there's always, like, contradiction out there. Like, is it killing this many people? Uh, is this what we should do? Is that what we should do? Is there going to be a vaccine soon? And I'm not really a fan of the idea of taking a uh, vaccine. I do kind of sort of believe in uh, natural immunity, of building up your immunity to it. I do take the precautions. I wear masks. I wash my hands. I take vitamins. I, I try to stay as healthy as possible. And the reality is, I think that it's only a matter of time before almost everybody's going to catch the bug. And it affects people differently. Like, for example, I have uh, O-positive blood, and apparently O-positive blood is a lot more resistant to the bug than other blood types, apparently. I'm also not uh, suffering from old age or any serious condition besides my fatty liver disorder. But besides that, for the most part, I, I think I'm in okay uh, shape health-wise and immunity-wise, so I should be fine. And if I did get sick, I, I know the, the things I have to do, the steps I have to take in order to help combat the bug. And it does affect people differently. Some people, it barely phases them. And unfortunately, in some instances, the bug has proven to be fatal. But there's also other conditions that have come out, other health problems, whether it's uh, obesity, heart problems, old age, etc., that has also contributed to uh, the bug uh, having a lethal effect on these uh, individuals. There's some people that have had cancer, right? Stage four cancer, like terminal cancer. 
and they get the bug and they die and then they blame it on the bug. I'm like, that, that person was dying. It, it's sad, it's tragic how many people have died across the world, just like Trump was saying last night. But a lot more lives were projected to be lost in the United States. A lot more. And there's still more lives that could be lost. I mean, we are approaching the fall, apparently. In the fall, we might see a new wave of the bug hitting people. I just hope that everyone's being smart, taking the precautions necessary in the hopes of trying to reduce the chances of it spreading and them catching it. And that's all you really can do at the end of the day. But I do think that most people will be okay going to the polls on election day voting as long as you, like I said, take the proper precautions. So, yay, along with the bug, we have uh, forest fires. You know, at the beginning of the year, what, the January 2020 vlog, we were talking about the forest fires in Australia and, what, potential World War Three, And I think we even talked about the bug. And who realized that it was going to get as bad as it's gotten now? Oh, another factor that is interesting about Mafia Defense Edition is on certain modes, your car can run out of gas. So... I do like the realism of Mafia Defense Edition. It definitely reminds me of uh, City of Lost Heaven and Mafia 2. So this is the first time I've actually ever ran out of gas in this game. I've talked so much. So we're going to have to borrow another car. So which automobile will we take with us? I, I guess we'll take this lovely uh, supercar right here <laughs> for the duration of, of the stream. Uh, I mean the vlog. <laughs> the vlog. All right. Even though I'm not going to get copyright claimed because this channel is not even monetized, I'll still, out of habit, keep the music off. So we have forest fires out in the West. It seems like every year there's forest fires out there. They've been pretty bad in California. I think also at uh, Oregon, uh, Washington, etc. And as you can tell, this car is really, really fast. It's like the fastest car in the game. No, it's not. But it is. It is a tragedy how many lives have been affected by uh, the forest fires and how much forest and wildlife has been lost because of it. It is a tragedy. Unfortunately, it's something that's happened for a long time. And there's a lot of people that debate the reasoning behind it. Is it climate change, global warming? Is it arsonists? Maybe it's a little bit of everything. I know there have been a few instances where there have been arsonists that have been caught. Okay, this one's a little bit faster. We're going to switch cars again. I do apologize. But anyways, we need to get a car that's a little bit more ump to it. There we go. All right. So this this bolt is a little bit better. Hey, don't don't tattletale on me. Snitches get stitches, see? So, I mean, that's about all I can say about the, um, about the forest fires. There's not really I can do about that. It is sad. I hope that they're able to get the fires under control. And uh, tonight, um, in a few hours from now... Probably by the time I post this vlog, we'll have a one hour of South Park airing the pandemic special. I hope that they're planning on doing a full season. I don't know, to be honest, but I'm a huge South Park fan. I've been a fan since the 90s, since the very beginning. I love Matt and Trey. I think they do a great job and a lot of their opinions align with mine, you know, down the middle. And I'm hoping that tonight we, we see more of that. Not, not from the extreme right or the extreme left, but somewhere down the middle when it comes to whatever topics it's covered in this one-hour special of South Park tonight. I wonder if there's actually going to be like a full season, or is this going to be it? Are they just going to do this one-hour special, and then that's going to be it? Because I, I saw something earlier today where, like everybody else, uh, South Park Studios, like everybody, not just Matt and Trey, but the entire animators, everybody behind South Park, uh, they moved like all a lot of their like equipment, their computers, servers, and whatnot, from the their main office to people's homes, to their employees' homes, and so once again, it's a remote thing where they are a lot of them are working from home to make this one-hour special of South Park, which will make it a lot more difficult to churn out episodes because what they do with South Park throughout the uh, run is every week they put out a new episode. It, it literally takes them like six days to whip up the episode. So once they're done with an episode, once it airs like Wednesday night, about that time, they're working on the next week's episode. They're scripting it, Matt and Trey, and they're starting to voice it, and they have the animators doing the animating thing. 
and they have to get it done by that Tuesday, and they have to get the final version of the episode, uh, I guess, uh, sent or emailed or wired, whatever they do, Dropboxed to uh, Comedy Central in order for it to air, air by the next night. So it is going to be fascinating to see how the season of South Park is actually going to run, whether it's just a one-hour special and that's going to be it after tonight. Or are they actually going to have uh, other 30-minute episodes uh, throughout uh, the next uh, couple months? I hope we have more episodes. Maybe they'll like give uh, South Park like two weeks instead of one week to get an episode done. Or maybe they've already put together some episodes beforehand. I mean, it's been 2020. There's been a lot of topics, a lot of things that have happened in 2020 uh, to give them plenty of material to do episodes around. And usually that's what South Park does is their episodes are a lot to do about the hot topics, the trending topics of what's going on in America and the world in general. And let's just say 2020 has, in that regard, given them plenty to, uh, to go on. Yeah, plenty. <laughs> Just a little bit, right? So uh, next, what we got? Uh, oh, yeah. October. I'm very, very excited about October. As I mentioned, we got Halloween coming up. Fall, cooler weather. And uh, starting uh, in, what, a day or two from now? We have uh, Star Wars Squadrons coming out. And I might be uh, streaming that on Friday or Saturday nights, an extra stream. Because I love Star Wars, as some of you may know. And I used to love the X-Wing TIE Fighter series from back in the day. The golden age of LucasArts. I mean, I love TIE Fighter. I loved X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter, Rogue Squadron. And it's, it's a game I've been wanting for a long time. Just like with the remake of this game, Mafia Defend Edition, a remake of Mafia City of Lost Heaven, I have desired a new version or something similar to X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter which is basically what we're getting in Star Wars Squadrons. So I already have that pre-ordered. Very excited about that. Hopefully it'll turn out to be good. Basically, it's once like like I said, it's basically X-Wings versus TIE Fighters. And all the different varieties like X-Wings, B-Wings, A-Wings, Y-Wings on the uh, New Republic side. Because this takes place after the Battle of Endor. And then on the Imperial Remnant side, what's left of the Empire, you have the, the typical TIE Fighter... The TIE Bomber, my personal favorite, which is the TIE Interceptor. I'm going to hopefully spend a lot of time in the uh, TIE Interceptor. And then there's some other uh, s spaceships as well, other starfighters that they're going to add. I think they're going to add down the road. But very excited for Star Wars Squadrons. And coming up in, what, Red Dead Online in a few weeks from now, we're getting uh, the Halloween Pass. So that's going to be kind of cool because, as you know, I love Halloween. And any time uh, a video game that I happen to play, like GTA Online or Red Dead Online, happens to do something Halloween-themed, I get excited. Very, very excited. And uh, also, Ghost of Tsushima Legends is coming out sometime this fall. And that's going to be like a multiplayer game, like a version add-on to uh, Ghost of Tsushima, which I absolutely loved playing, by the way. And it's going to be uh, two versions. Uh, those are going to be like a two-player story. And then there's going to be like a four-player like survival mode. And I'm definitely going to be playing that with some friends like uh, Riley, uh, Karunzi, Ben, Kane, maybe some others. So that should be fun. I may even stream some of that action. And the same thing with uh, Star Wars Squadrons. If Riley ends up streaming it, I'll probably end up you know, being her wingman on uh, Star Wars Squadrons. Hopefully she'll enjoy playing that. I think uh, Gizmo also said he was going to play it. I think it's cross-play. I believe it's cross-play. So even though Riley and I are going to be playing on the PS4, he's on the Xbox One, so there might be cross-play. I could be wrong about that. But, uh, yeah, so Star Wars Squadrons, I'm excited about. Wrapping up uh, Season 2 of The Boys in the next two weeks. Uh, new episode of South Park tonight. Hopefully it'll be good and it doesn't disappoint. And uh, the, the Halloween pass for Red Dead Online. And there's going to be updates to Red Dead Online and GTA Online November or December. Hopefully they're both good. And like I said, uh, Ghost of Tsushima Legends. Yeah, all that I'm excited for. I'm not excited for the rest of the year. More riots, more looting. I mean, peaceful protesting. The debates, I guess they'll be entertaining. Except for the vice presidential debate, that may not be. But since Harris is probably 
technically their unofficial uh, presidential candidate and Biden's just the puppet, just the mask. I might watch the vice presidential debate between her and Pence, see how that goes. That'll be interesting. I don't expect the same amount of fireworks as, say, between Trump and Biden. They have two more debates, by the way. I'll probably watch those as well. Why not? Especially if it's on a night I have nothing better to do. For the sake of entertainment. But I don't know if I'm going to bring back the political channel. That's over a decade old. I keep getting burnt out with politics. And I really don't know what to do with the political channel. I just, I don't know. I mean, I tried bringing it back earlier this year. I actually think I brought it back last year around this time, right? I also tried to bring back my dad's uh, Cannabis Corner channel. That didn't last very long. I mean, I'm just not a, I'm not a good enough host. I'm not knowledgeable about that topic that, like my dad was. I mean, he was knowledgeable about it. He was passionate about it. And I brought Cannabis Corner back for a short time. But then after a while, I just, yeah, it didn't work out for me. But I tried, though. At least I tried. The political channel, like I mentioned earlier, it's uh, on hibernation. I don't know if I'll bring it back. Maybe in the future. But that leads us now to the gaming channel. And the fact that I feel like I'm reaching like some sort of creator fatigue. Now when it comes to streaming, mind you, I mean, the streaming's fine. I don't mind that. I mean, I love the interaction between the viewers and subscribers. And I'm grateful for anybody that does watch me play the game, it means a lot to me to have you there. Whether you actually interact in the chat or you leave a like or you're just a lurker, I do appreciate you watching my content and my streams. But when it comes to the uh, content specifically, like case in point, making the uh, review video for Mafia Defense Edition or last week's property ideas video for Red Dead Online, I don't know. It's just, I feel like I'm... I don't know, I feel like that there's some sort of drain happening to me. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see as many of those types of videos from me going forward. I'll, I'll still cover the uh, weekly newswires, Rockstar Newswires for uh, Red Dead Online and GT Online. Even if I don't end up streaming Red Dead Online's newswire like I was initially a few weeks ago, then I went back to just making videos because it's quicker and easier. Especially if there's not much going on in the newswire. So what I may do is just keep doing those as videos. They're pretty easy to make, simple enough. I do screw up a few times sometimes and I have to edit that shit out, but that's, that's nothing new. Unlike the vlogs where it's mostly raw and me just talking and bumbling along the way. And a lot of those videos I do try to edit things down, especially the videos I actually uh, put a lot more effort into, like the review video for Mafia Defense Edition, my ideas videos, my thoughts videos, the rant videos, etc. But lately, I just feel a drain. I feel like I'm... I don't know what's happening there, whether it's content creator fatigue or whatnot. So I just don't know what I'm going to do in that regard. I mean, you may just get... It may just get to the point where I'm just streaming mostly, except for those two event week videos. And maybe I'll try to put out one video a week besides that. Maybe, but at the same time, I'm just, I don't know what's going on with me personally. I really don't. I don't know if it's 2020 starting to get to me or the fact that there's so many other content creators and streamers out there that uh, make content for the same games I make. And I don't have a problem with that. That's fine. As long as they make good quality content and they're not disingenuous, they're not hate clicking or uh, click baiting or, you know, that nonsense. I hate that shit. Are the glitch videos where they're doing like uh, money gold dupe glitches. I hate that shit. Can't stand them. But it just feels like lately, especially with like Mafia Defense Edition, I've noticed that other content creators are just getting videos out. Like bam, video, bam, video, bam, video. And I'm just not... I just... I have, I, I've had ideas for videos and then I just don't do it. I don't know. It's just like... I just, I think I've lost my drive. I, I've, I've thrown out so many ideas on the gaming channel since, what, March uh, 2014? For over six years now. That's the entire reason why I started that channel was because of the fact that I'm a lifetime gamer. I've been playing GTA since the original GTA back in the 90s. And because I already had a YouTube channel, the political channel, and I had a radio background. And there were other content creators making videos 
based off GT Online. I thought, hey, why not? I had ideas for videos, so I just ran with it. But eventually, you do feel like the tank might start to run a little empty, just like with the tank on this car in Mafia Definitive Edition. So I, I really don't know what I'm going to do going forward. There's part of me that wants to continue trying to make content. I don't want to force myself to, obviously. But I just don't feel the same push. And I, I feel like other people out there are just, you know, hitting it. They're just hitting it, hitting it, hitting it. And me, I'm just barely hitting it these days. I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, I, looking back 20 years ago when I was first getting into radio, hard to believe it's been 20 years since I first interned. I honestly wanted to be in radio, but because of a lot of issues, corporatization, downsizing, deregulation, and automation, it just dried up the, the radio industry career-wise, and there's a lot less opportunities every year when it comes to radio. And even when I got out many years ago, the reason why I got out was not because I was tired of radio, it was because I couldn't find a job. At the time, I only had like five years experience. And I was going up against people that had 15, 20 years experience and way more connections than I had. But I just don't know. I really don't know. Maybe hoping that I'll find a renewed interest or a renewed desire or push to make more content on uh, the gaming channel or else it'll just eventually just be streams. Mostly streams with a... You know, some Newswire videos. And there may even come a point where I stop doing the Newswire videos. I've even thought about that. I don't know. And it, it's, it sucks. But at the same time, I part of me still wants to do it. But then there's also part of me that doesn't want to do it. But then there's also another part of me that's like, well, what else am I going to fucking do? <laughs> I, just, I just don't know. I really don't know. So it's just something I've had on my mind for a while now. I, I don't want to completely quit the gaming channel. But I just feel like I'm out of ideas. And I'm also feeling like my, my drive to make content is just not, not there like it used to be. Uh, crap. All right, let me get out of this guy's way. Sorry about that, pal. It's not my fault the guy ran into me. Got my way. But anyways, these people just don't even pay attention to whether they're just walking about looking both ways. They're just asking to be ran over. I'm just saying. I don't know. I just, I don't know what it is. Is it because I've been doing this for six years and even though I'm grateful for the viewers, subscribers that I do have, there's also part of you as a content creator and streamer that would like to believe that you should be further along than you are subscriber review wise. And then I see other subscriber, other content creators and streamers come in and they just fly right past me. And I see others that make similar videos to me and they do better. I don't know how or why they do better. It's just the way it goes with YouTube. Is It's an algorithm thing. I don't know. It's luck of the draw, timing. I don't know. And sometimes some of my videos actually do good. A few of them have gone viral over the years, but... When I first started, you know, I was pretty confident that if these guys that already had hundreds of thousands of subscribers and so many views uh, were, were doing this good in the subscriber view count, that eventually if I kept at it, if I became dedicated and put my passion into it and hard work, that eventually I, I would get up there as well. Six years later, you know, I'm proud of the fact that I, I have 12,500 more subscribers than when I started. I have, what, 3.7, 3.8 million lifetime views. But at the same time, I'm always self-critical. I'm always very hard on myself. And I, I expect better and I make mistakes. And I'm far from perfect. And that's that goes for just about anybody. But it's, it does become demoralizing even though I, I don't feel like I'm in direct competition with anybody I, I still I do it because I enjoy doing it I enjoy it because I like making content and I love video games and I have ideas for video games and thoughts and whatnot but at the end of the day there is a there is an expectation that 
I feel like I should be further along than I am. And every year I have told myself, just keep going, keep going, keep doing what you're doing. Stay the course and be yourself. And you will continue to gain more and more subs, more and more viewers, more and more subscribers. And eventually the time will come when you will finally make it, as they say. I never wanted to be rich off of this. I never wanted any of that nonsense. But, you know, it would be cool if you could equate it to, you know, a, a decent living. Even though I don't really need that. I'm fine in that department. But it, it would have been a nice accomplishment to, to tell people, look, I put hard work into this. I put dedication into this. I build up a great community of viewers and subscribers. And I, I do have that. So I, I do have that from all of you. But like I say, you know, when you're, when you're doing something, you're always, especially when you're a content creator and a streamer, you're always wanting to grow. You're always wanting to do better. You know, personally, you want to do better and numbers wise and view wise. And I, I get that from my radio background because we're always obsessed with the ratings, uh, getting the station better this quarter than last quarter in the ratings, more viewers, more listeners. It's to be expected. And the same goes for uh, a content creator and a streamer. Obviously, most of the content creators and streamers out there want to do better. But at the same time, I am content. I am happy with the community I have been able to build around me and the awesome viewers, the subscribers, the friends I've made, especially uh, members and I've, I've never asked anybody to ever donate to me financially or to be a member. But people that wanted to, you know, I, I set that up for them. And it does equate financially to, I guess you could say, like a part-time job, a hobby that's become a part-time job. It's good. And it's like I tell people, if you get into this, don't do it for the money. <laughs> Believe me, it. You're going to put money into it. You're going to put passion into it. You're going to put dedication and love into it and hard work. But it's it's a good hobby. It's something I've enjoyed. I mean, we all have different hobbies and... Wow, what happened to that cop car? No donuts for you. By the end of the day, you know, no matter what happens, no matter what decision I decide to make with the channel going forward... I am grateful for all the viewers and subscribers on the gaming channel and those of you that have come over here to the vlogs channel. I am proud of the community we have built on in our Discord community and on our YouTube community. It, like I said, it is a little demoralizing. You see a lot of clickbaiters, a lot of these other content creators just fly right past me. And there is part of me that feels like they don't deserve it. And maybe the truth is I don't deserve it. Maybe I don't deserve to be a big channel. Maybe I don't deserve to have more viewers and subscribers. I mean, people tell me I do, but I always, like I said, I'm my own worst critic. I always look at myself and I look at the views and I'm, I'm like I said, I'm grateful for the views over there. But I also see other reviews, like for example, Mafia Defensive Edition reviews. I've seen other channels with more views for their video. I feel like I put a little bit of effort into my Mafia review video. But at the same time, you know, you ask yourself, well, what is it about me that people don't like? What is it that I'm doing wrong? I do the tags. I do the hash. You know, I, I do all that. I, mean, I feel like I've learned a lot in the past decade of YouTube. I, mean, I still have a lot to learn because there's always something new to learn about YouTube. But I feel like I've come a long ways. And then most recently, an OBS hiccup uh, caused another issue with me. They updated their software and on my main computer, where I mostly record OBS uh, videos like the Event Week Newswire videos for GTA and Reddit Online, it caused an issue when I would carry it, I would like transfer it over to my other computer where I have my uh, Vegas editing software. And for some reason, since that update to OBS, it, it is preventing the video portion of the video from appearing in the editing bay. The audio portion is there. But fortunately, I have an older version of OBS on the uh, older computer, so it's it's a small issue, a minor inconvenience. I can still do the Rockstar Newswire videos for Red Dead Online, GTA Online, and if there's any future Newswire videos uh, for Mafia Defensive Edition, I can do that as well. It's not a big deal. 
It's just one more thing. Maybe it's because I'm using an older uh, version of Vegas, which I'm quite happy with. I'm not happy with being hit by a cop for no damn reason. Just because I'm going a little fast in a video game. Come on. That's on me. I should have lowered the difficulty before I started the vlog. I actually, I forgot. But anyways, I think that's enough vlogging for today, for September 2020. If I forgot anything, if I left anything out, I do apologize. There's always something I leave out, but I think we covered a, a wide variety of topics, and I do find the vlogs to be very self-therapeutic for me. They, they definitely help me out personally when I have these things on my mind, and I, I feel like getting them off my chest. or just some things I want to talk about, things I find funny or are tragic, miserable, or things that you're just tired of, especially with the way 2020 has gone. Hopefully October will be good because I feel like with the election coming up in early November in America, I feel like things are about to go from really bad to worse. So maybe we'll get like a month reprieve. Maybe October will be great. Maybe we'll have an awesome Halloween, a fall. Along with the, uh, like I mentioned, a few other things coming up. Star Wars Squadrons in just a few days. South Park back. Hopefully they don't sell out and bend the knee to SJW nonsense. And uh, hopefully... Uh, the remaining two episodes of The Boys will be good. I, I just hope that we at least get one good month out of October. Hopefully. Is that too much to ask? I think not. But no matter what happens, a month from now, we will find out how October went down. Hopefully I'll still be around. And if I am still around, I will be doing another vlog for October 2020 in about a month from now. So if you enjoy my vlogs... You're welcome to subscribe to the vlog channel. Check out previous vlogs. And if you enjoyed this vlog, feel free and leave a like. And as I always like to say, uh, if there's anything that actually happened in your life in September 2020 that was good, please give me some good information about things going on in your lives. Hopefully you got something that happened that was awesome. Feel free and leave any good news, anything that in your life good in September 2020 below in the comment section and i will see you hopefully in a month from now for the october 2020 vlog on halloween <laughs>